Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Emily Smith, and I'm a data scientist with Pets at Home. Um, so today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a project we recently completed um, looking at predicting store cannibalization. Um, so when I say store cannibalization, it's essentially we've produced a model so that you can place a pin anywhere in the UK, and it will tell us how much of our customer base will move to that store if we place a store in that area, and the impact on the surrounding stores in that area. Um, obviously, that's an issue that's been solved many times before using gravity models, but we've used a slightly different method using machine learning, which I'll tell you a bit about. But just to give you a bit of background, um, so at Pets Home, we have a dedicated location planning team. Um, when they're looking at place and store, they'll take into account things like accessibility of the site, population in the area, the number of people we think own pets in that area. But another uh, thing they look at is store cannibalization. So with over 450 stores in the UK, it's getting more uh, difficult to solve this issue of finding an untapped customer base without just moving around our existing customers. Um, so we've got a map on the left there of all the stores we have in the UK. Um, but using our loyalty card information, we're able to detect where customers live. And when we move a store into that area, we can tell when they stop spending one store and move to another. Um, so it's a really consistent uh, and solid base for this model. Um, so we decided to take advantage of that. Um, so why not a gravity model? Obviously, that's the industry standard but it's based mainly on the attractiveness of a store and the distance to store. Um, when we build stores these days with pets at home, they all seem to look quite similar. So they're all a similar size. They all have similar services like a groom room, um, a vets, etc. And it also wouldn't allow us to take in advantage of the customer data we have. The other side of it is um, we need to produce these models at a really fast rate and the attractiveness score in a gravity model um, is manually produced and calibrated and would take quite a bit of work and be quite subjective. Um, so we decided to take a different approach. We went with a light GBM regression. Um, the benefits of that is it can process a large amount of data in a short amount of time. Um, it's a gradient boosted model based on decision trees. And it can also take categorical and continuous data without the need for one hot encoding. So it was really suitable for this problem. Um, so the way that we did it, on the right, we've got a map of the Clacton store. In the dark green is every area um, within the dark green spends more than 70% of their spend in the Clacton store. So that's the primary catchment. And in the slightly lighter green, we've got the secondary catchment, which is between 40 and 70% spent in Clacton. Um, so what we did was, within the model, for every pocket um, in, well, within 40 minutes, every lower super output area, we predicted the percentage spend that they would spend in that store if we placed in that area. And then the next stage was, for that area, we would look at where they were spending before. So if you take Ipswich, which is the store at the top of this map, it could be that there was a little area that was spending 80% in Ipswich, but that's now dropped to 20%. Um, so we could also calculate financially the impact of that. And then the final stage was to roll that up across all areas to build these catchments and um, take a final figure of the cannibalization. The benefits of this is the only inputs required are the postcode and the store size. Um, so it's really easy to run a full data set through. We could run 100 postcodes in about 15 minutes and have the output sent to stakeholders. So it's a really fast turnaround, which is really beneficial. Um, so just a little bit about the input variables. So we've got um, the spend in nearby stores prior to the store opening, um, just to build a picture of the current landscape. We've got the drive time which is obviously really important for a gravity model as well. It's equally important here. So we've got the distance from uh, the area to the new store and also how much closer is the new store than the previous store or further away. So it's a really good indicator of whether customers will travel there. We can also build up a profile of the area looking at the index of multiple deprivation, which we take from the Office of National Statistics. Um, the spend of that area in pets home services the population density and the competitors 
um, or other pets and home stores within 10 kilometres. And finally, which I guess would feed into attractiveness in a gravity model, we've got the store size that we're looking at, which is manual input. And then we've also got the retail part category. So originally we were manually creating this and it was quite subjective and inconsistent. So we've um, moved to using the retail centre data provided by the Consumer Data Research Centre and it's improved the model um, and made it standardised, so it's been really beneficial. Okay, so the modelling approach, um, this is the last slide before I show you the results. Um, so basically we've taken every store that's opened since 2018. So what we do, it's 19 stores. We set aside 18 to be the training data and then set aside one to be the test. So um, it was basically like a leave one out cross validation. We basically ran it 19 times to produce results for each store. And it allowed us to know that it was gonna generalize well uh, and be consistent and moving forward every time we created a, or looked at a new store, it would give us reliable results. Okay, so the first set of results I'll show you, this is Bangor in Northern Ireland. So on the left, you've got the actual cannibalization and the primary and secondary catchments. And on the right, we've got the predicted cannibalization. So with the um, with primary catchment, it looks like it did a pretty good job. Um, you can see in the center, it got two areas slightly mixed up between primary and secondary, but otherwise it was pretty much spot on. With the secondary catchment, you can see that in the south of the picture, it under predicted, um, so it didn't quite capture, capture that secondary catchment. But what we found was that with rural areas with very few people in them, it was more volatile. So if you think about an area that has 10 people in it, each person counts for 10% compared to an area of 500, it's less volatile. So when you rolled it up, it actually didn't really impact the error that much. Um, so you can see that Newton Abbey uh, over predicted by 0.3%, Belfast was 0.1%, and Lisburn actually didn't have any cannibalization from Bangor, but we predicted 0.5. So the maximum was 0.5%. Um, overall, at the model level, the error was about 1.5%, so it was pretty low. Okay, moving on to Saffron Walden. Uh, so this is near Cambridge. Again, you can see the primary catchment was pretty accurate. It missed a slight chunk and underpredicted it to be secondary. Uh, and the secondary catchment at the south of the picture was slightly underpredicted as well. Um, so you can see that Cambridge was um, underpredicted by 1%. Uh, Haverhill was 7.6 and it should have been 8. Braintree was under by 2%, and Bishop Stortford was under by 1.2%. Um, so in this area, it looks like quite a rural area as well. There was a slight underprediction, but overall, it still wasn't too bad. Okay, finally, uh, up in my neck of the woods, you can just about see my mum's house in this map. Um, so you can see that the primary catchment, um, slightly overpredicted, but there's a lot of mountains in the area, so I'm guessing not many people live there. And again, the secondary catchment, slightly underpredicted in the south, but a lot of mountains there as well. Uh, Bishop Briggs is overpredicted by 2%, Glasgow Forge was underpredicted by 1.3, and Coat Bridge was overpredicted by 0 0.5, but again, it's not too bad. Visually, it's like spot the difference, which is quite good because if it was easy, it means models being rubbish. Uh, okay, so just to wrap up. So overall, with the um, regression performance, so we compared it to a standard gravity model, um, but the gravity model didn't have access to our customer data. Uh, however, you can see that, well, in 80% of all cases, our um, light GBM regression outperformed the gravity model. Um, and another 10% where the gravity model outperformed us, we were within 1%. Um, so I've got a little case study here. Um, it's actually East Kilbride. Um, but in four of the six cases, our model outperformed the gravity model. Um, we were outperformed in one case, and in one case, there was a tie. Uh, so it's quite representative of how the model performed across the board. Um, so yeah, just to wrap up, um, I guess the, the main benefit came from using customer data and being able to incorporate that. However, the other benefit moving forward is every time we open a new store, that will then feed into this model and hopefully the model will just continue to improve. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I hope it was interesting. Uh, thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your day.